people often ask the question, is the American dream dead? I believe the moment we stop dreaming, we might as well be. Hi, I'm your host, Craig Sewing, the creator of American Dream TV, a national TV show centered around real estate, lifestyle, and culture. A real show showing you real neighborhoods from real professionals. Today, we're going to take you all across the country, showing you why we live in the greatest country on the planet. Let's get this show started right now. Welcome to the American Dream. The American Dream. You're watching the American Dream. The American Dream. Showing you the real estate, the lifestyle, the culture. Let's get this party started right now. Let's go do this. It is heating up once again. We're the Davids going up against the Goliath. Real stories in real neighborhoods with real experts. The staple of the neighborhood. Can't wait to present it to you. It's all about lifestyle. In your community. That's what this show, The American Dream, is all about. Cheers to your American Dream. Aloha, everyone. I'm Donna Coles, your host, and welcome to the American Dream Hawaiian style. Today, we are on a hero's journey out in Ka'aaba, which is a small coastal town on the windward side of Oahu, literally sandwiched between the Pacific Ocean and those mountains, the Ko'olau Mountain Range. And that's where our hero, Sergio Florian, was out on a training run and came upon a stranded, injured, and very scared Stevie the dog. Let's go meet our hero. Aloha, Sergio. Thank you for sharing your story with us today. Let's talk about how this miracle was even possible. You are an endurance athlete, an ultra runner, a neurospinal cord physical therapist, and you have your own clinic. And I know just from meeting you and speaking with you, your passion and mission in life is movement. So it makes sense you're an ultra runner, but just tell us a little bit about how and why you became one. Yeah, um, it originally started uh, for health reasons. I was in my late 20s and I would go to the doctor and continuously I would have high blood pressure and cholesterol, just markers that I wasn't happy with. And eventually I knew that I would have to get on some prescription medications and I really wanted to avoid that. So I try to find a natural way. That's what sparked my interest in aerobic conditioning and aerobic training. And I went on this research binge, you know, and I got really excited about movement. And I started incorporating that with my clients. And so I started to tie everything in and I saw the importance of movement and what it can do for people. And I started noticing what it was doing for me. And so I started to challenge myself and I started to do longer, longer, events i started to use that motto that phrase movement is life right without movement you're you're not alive yeah. you know you have to move you have to circulate your blood through your body and this is pretty much what i what i preach to my clients on a daily basis you know i've done anywhere from ironmans to cycling events to ultra marathons now and yeah i specialize now in 100 mile events my longest event that i've completed is the perimeter of oahu and I, I ran around the perimeter of Oahu in 27 hours and 15 minutes. Okay, yeah. so our hero has superpowers. <laughs> no. He can run for 27 hours. Well, my longest run is actually 33 hours to complete a UTMB race in Mexico. And it was one of the hardest races the pros have ever seen, they said. Wow. And you know, you just learn your body. And I just wanted to highlight human movement. So yes. let's, let's talk about the rescue. So. I wasn't even planning on going for a run and it was already close to sunset. It was like six o'clock. I just went up behind my house, which is right here. I started at sea level at the, at, the, at the trailhead and I started to climb. Right along the edge of the cliff, I see Stevie curled up with one eye partly closed and she's shivering. And she got into a very precarious situation. There was a cliff where she dropped down from and there was another cliff 
ahead of her. She was stuck. There's no way I was gonna leave her. And she let me pet her slowly. Then I, I tried to grab her under, under her belly and she let me. And that was when I was like, I got a little excited. I was like, I can get her down. I had to take rest breaks. It was, it was strenuous. My arms were about ready to fall off. Uh, I, he is a lucky dog. Yes. <laughs> And on the way down, I called my wife and I said, hey, let's see if we can find the owner. And uh, yeah, long story short, it just turns out they were looking for her. It was a privilege to be able to be able to help her and, yeah. and to bring my movement is life and my yeah. fitness sort of uh, philosophy. Yeah. Into, it came into play and it helped me to do this. Stevie got a miracle. Yeah. So what is uh, in your future? What are you training for in the future? I'm passionate about what I do with my with my clinic, and I want to bring movement to the masses. I want to create a functional, adaptive facility or gymnasium that caters to people that have disabilities. You know, 13% of Americans are have a physical disability. Yeah. So my passion is that is helping people move, but I I can't do it unless I'm into it myself. Part of it is me also moving, and so my next challenge is the utmb race in europe i'm going to france to run in the french alps wow and it's going to be 90 miles and, and 30,000 feet of elevation gain thank you sergio for sharing your story again with us and being so inspirational to all of us and thank you the fans viewers for watching today and we'll catch you on the next segment of the american dream hawaiian style aloha everybody Aloha and welcome to this fascinating home I want to show you. It's a private residence at the Mauna Kea Resort here on the Kahala Coast on the big island of Hawaii. I'm Eileen Lassert, your host today on American Dream TV, Selling Hawaii. As you enter the property, what greets you and puts you in the mindset is the ultra red sauna, the cold plunge, and the outdoor shower. It sets the stage for the relaxation that this tropical retreat has in store for you. Now follow me through this lush tropical landscaping as we enter the front of the home. You have a treat in store. As we step inside, notice the new koa flooring that sets the stage for a home filled with island warmth. This kitchen has been totally remodeled with the state-of-the-art appliances. And there's one thing that I have to point out. I have pot envy. I love these pot fillers. When you thought it couldn't get any better, you have all of this. The ultimate indoor-outdoor living. As a resident, you will be offered the opportunity to join the Mauna Kea Club, which offers access to world-class golf, tennis facilities, and a beach club at one of the best beaches on the island. This home is not only a residence, it's a lifestyle offering unmatched amenities and community privileges. This won't last on the market long. Now, come with me as we meet up with Mayor Roth at one of the big island's best, ready for it, brewery. Come on, let's go. So Mayor, where have you brought us this episode? This episode, I brought you to one of my favorite watering holes, also one of the best places to eat here in Hawaii, and one of the best tours you can take on the big island, the Kona Brewing Company. And today, we have the present 
Natalie and the brewmaster Ryan. So Natalie, can you tell us a little bit about where we're at? Sure, you're at Kona Brewing Hawaii, which is an independent local craft brewery located here in Kailua, Kailua Kona, Hawaii. And Kailua Kona is actually where it started 30 years ago. And to this day, we continue to brew exceptional beer and provide great experiences for our guests here at the Thirsty Gecko, taking a brewery tour, or at the pub with our famous pep rolls and pizzas and obviously great beers. You know, not only do you guys have great beers, but everything you do here is done sustainable. Can, Ryan, can you tell a bit about your sustainability and what you do here? Yeah, so this brewery was designed to be one of the most sustainable breweries on earth. Uh, we have a premier wastewater recovery system, a full solar array. We do our own recovery of CO2, and we take all of our spent grains to local ranchers. Uh, we recycle everything we possibly can to divert everything from the landfills, so much so that we got a mayor's award this last year. The Mayor of Sustainability Award going to great businesses doing sustainable things. Not only are you making great beer, but you're saving the planet at the same time. So let's go take the tour. Let's go to the thirsty gecko. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> All right, so uh, Mayor, these are the, the beers that we make here at the Kona Brewing Company. These are our year-round beers. Uh, we do have some uh, specialty backyard batch beers that we do uh, periodically throughout the year, but all of these ones that you see uh, are ones that you can find year-round in uh, draft and in cans. Well, Aline, what do you think about our Liquid Aloha tour here at the Kona Brewery? It was tasty. Informative, and, you know, they view everything sustainably. That's what I loved about the sustainability. But I also liked the thirsty gecko. <laughs> <laughs> like that cocoa brown beer? That, that was cocoa great. brown beer. Highly recommend it. I'm your host, Eileen Lasser, for American Dream TV, Selling Hawaii. Aloha. to another episode of the American Dream TV. I'm your host, Nana Sainz. Now we're standing here at Royal Hawaiian Center. This is the ultimate gateway to this vibrant Waikiki district. Now this is nestled on the southern shores of Oahu, and we're gonna visit the Wolfgang State House, which is right here on the third floor. This is where culture meets natural beauty. Come explore with me, let's go. So, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your time. And then, um, I see a gorgeous wine cellar here, so I'd like to take a few moments to talk about these. Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, of course, I love wine and I love Cabernet Sauvignon, but what is the, I'm going to have to ask you, most expensive bottle that you have here? So we have a uh, Petrolius oh. for the wine. Yes. It's a uh, $15,000 bottles. Right. Also, we have um, more than 400 kind of wine. We have California wine, French wines, Spanish wines. These are all the variety we have. And not only the, the wine cellar, but I noticed the gorgeous decor. It is neoclassic. Mm -hmm. And um, is there anything that you have done specially for Waikiki? So we just uh, renovated uh, two years ago. Uh, we renovated the whole um, main dining area, also bar area. It's, we also expanded the uh, private room area also. So it sounds like you have many different rooms. Uh, different occasions can be accommodated. and. From what I understand, it is 12,000 square foot in size, correct? If you could show us around, that would be awesome. Let me show you. So um, this is our private room area. Uh, we can accommodate uh, 240 people. Um, kind of, kind of, it's a June right now, so we have a lot of uh, wedding customers. So um, we're having uh, a lot of uh, wedding reception party. 
Also, we have a local uh, company uh, business meeting in the private room area. So this restaurant only uses USDA prime beef, yes. correct? And the way it is cooked is it is dry aged and cooked or broiled at 1600 degree Fahrenheit. Yes. So what does that do to the beef? So we do, uh, we have a once in a week shipment from uh, mainland and we uh, put it in um, our own aging beef loo. We do uh, dry age for 28 days until uh, we serve the customer. So we have a 1600 degree broiler. So we barbecue the steak for like, you know, outside is very crunchy, it's like very tender. So. Right, so I guess it, it contains the umami of the beef when you cook it in that way. Mm -hmm. So what other dishes are known for at Wolfgang? I know there are delectable dasai dishes. Okay, so um, our lunch menu is popular on local moko and our classic burger is very popular for lunch time. We also, in dinner time, we have a seafood platter, um, lobster, uh, lobster is also very popular here too. Uh, for those who do not know what local moko is, if you can explain a little bit about what that dish is about. It's gravy and uh, the hamburger patty and the rice and the um, sunny side up eggs on top. Oh, that sounds delicious. And I personally love that too. So uh, I can't wait to try that in the near future. Thank you so much for your time today, Mr. Kito. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Well, now we're going to go take a look at this beautiful unit, panoramic ocean view, just in walking distance. So let's go. I'm standing in front of Kala'i, which is a part of the luxury collection, the Hilton's LXR Hotel and Resort. We're gonna look at a three bed, three and a half bath unit. It is gorgeous. It is unmatched for its world-class service, exquisite accommodations, and the beautiful ocean view. So let's go check it out. Kala'i Waikiki Beach is part of Hilton's LXR Hotel and Resort, which is one of their three distinct luxury brands. Enjoy absolutely breathtaking views of Diamond Head, the Blue Ocean, and Waikiki from the spacious three bedrooms, three and a half bath, featuring two bedrooms and wall suites. This fully furnished unit is highlighted by higher ceiling height and beautifully appointed hallways. Remotely controlled drapes and a separate laundry room are just a few of the added conveniences. Current hotel amenities include dining at Waiolu Ocean View Lounge, an Inyo Cafe, Fitness Center, Business Center, and Spa on property. Make this your next home or home away from home in paradise. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Well, until next time, I'm going to go grab lunch now. Aloha. Aloha. Welcome to the American Dream. Join us today as we explore Waipio Valley, one of the most magical and sacred spots on the Big Island. Things have changed a lot in the last few years in terms of like who can get access and who's allowed to come down. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's almost two and a half years now since the road shut down because of, you know, it's become unstable. We had a couple of landslides and you know, limited the traffic just to uh, put our residents, farmers, yeah. So it's not open to the public at this time? It's yeah, just well, residents. yeah, you have to be a Hawaii Island resident. Well, we feel lucky to be here then. We're going to have a great day today. Yeah, it's a beautiful day here and uh, we're excited to go down. Uh, no, we'll just pull here real quick and uh, okay. make our way down there. For this pohaku or this um, rock and the offering is to pua pua lena lena. Oftentimes it's in the form of tea leaf, florals, lays. Sometimes it's also food. And Pua Pua Lena Lena protects us in the valley. It's just an act that we carry generationally and it's just something we do every time we come down here. This is Baron. Hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, this aloha. is Uncle Jeremiah Koholoa'a. Yeah. This is your home, so beautiful. You yeah. have a beautiful view too. Is, oh. that, is that Hi'ilabe? Yes, 
Okay. Sometimes we take it for granted. I know. Because it's there every day. What makes Waipu Valley so sacred? Like, tell us a little bit about that, or the history, or I don't well, know. If, what would you if say? If you go back in the 14, 1500s, okay. yeah, Liloa was the most famous king. Everybody loved him because he ruled from the bottom up, which means he took care of the people. Okay. This place was uh, the Valley of the Kings, as you guys know. Valley of the Kings. You know? Yeah. Kings. And we had the uh, most famous kings that, that, that came out of this place. Our genealogy okay. traces us back all the way to those kings that I'm talking about. Wow. This place. Our ancestors was buried everywhere in this valley. Yeah. It can be found from the 1600s, 1500s, 1400s. That's where our family came from. So what is life like down here, like in YPO Valley? Oh, sometimes I don't want to go home. Yeah, sometimes just... you don't want to go home? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just want to stay and just, just on my own, do my own thing and, and enjoy the days, like you're in your own little world. How long has your family been, had the business for? I know they've had this taro field for a long time, but how long oh, has your family I was in the, had their business? My grandfather was like the late 1800s. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Kalo farming and the Kalo in general, as, as we Hawaiians or Kanaka like to think that we came from Haloa, which is also a variety of Kalo. We try and perpetuate it generationally by having the kids come down, work in Aloe's. We come down here, work in Aloe's, so it's really good fun. Once we got our, loi, our kalos pulled out of the loi, it sort of looks like this, and we take off the roots, as we kind of showed earlier, to, and take off the leaf. This huli, we can actually use to replant. You know, all these patches have come from one of these hulis that we've just taken from a grown kalo. And this is the end product. This is your taro or your kalo. So we'll steam that up, cook it for about six to eight hours. We mash it up and we add some water and we make it into this paste-like product. And then in addition to poi, uh, we also use the kalo to make dessert called kulolo. And that as well is a traditional um, Hawaiian dessert made with kalo, sugarcane, and coconut milk. Wow, I'm excited to dig in. for joining us today. I'm your host, Baron Brown with the American Dream. If you'd like to have your own authentic Hawaiian experience down in YPO Valley and harvest Kalo, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll connect you guys. Thanks for watching and no matter where you're at, I hope you're living Aloha every day. We'll see you guys next time. Aloha. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the American Dream TV. We created this show to combat negative media, to show that the American Dream is alive and well by showing you real stories in real neighborhoods. Thank you so much for watching the show and cheers to your American Dream.